Welcome back to The Void. I want to talk about something that's been on my mind lately. I didn't really know how to address it. Coffee came out with this video not long ago called Please Don't Do This. And Coffeezilla, speaking on his Voidzilla channel, is much, much bigger than I am. He has millions of views and subscribers. I have thousands. And by comparison, it's a huge, huge gap. But what he said really speaks to me. And I have faced a similar thing. And I wanted to put this out because I, I had some thoughts I wanted to share. But I just feel like we have to do it. Even though every time I find a video like this, I think it's cringe, bro. I don't like it. I think it's dumb. And that's because I have to ask you to do something that's like obvious. Yeah. Yep. I totally agree with that. And I think a lot of this stuff is cringe as well. I really, really don't like to. Uh, but in some cases, it feels like the lesser of two evils. But I think the way Coffeezilla, Voidzilla, just started this video out to say, hey, this is, uh, this is implied to everyone. Also, it, I feel really awkward, but I just need to say it. I think that was the, the right way to go about this. And I find myself in the same situation whenever I'm thinking about, do I need a prepared statement? Do I need whatever? But anyways, yep, I totally, totally get it. In, they will like kind of headline my video, but miss say what I'm actually saying in the video and like accuse them of something far worse, something I never accused them of. And I'm like, you're not helping me. Well, do you think like this ad, like a false advertisement for my video? So yeah, here it is. When I was doing cryptocurrency videos back in 2016 and the lending platforms really popped off, People were headlining my videos, and, and that's when I came to prominence within that industry. Those, those views were a lot for, for that particular sector. And people would take my videos and then headline them on their channels, and I didn't really copy strike any of them or anything like that, even though I probably should have, uh, but it always was awkward to me because they would... They would not exactly misrepresent, so it's a little bit different than CoffeeZilla, but they would try to push their referral videos, referral links, and all these different things on their viewership using my content, which was usually completely opposite to what they were pushing. They were pushing, use my referral links, and my videos were, be very careful of people who do that because the numbers don't exactly match up with the promises. And this was all during the crypto currency craze and the lending platforms, you know, the, the height of which was BitConnect uh, getting indicted and I think it was over a billion dollars that that scam, you know, control finance and and on and on and on. There were so many of them where I was fact checking them. Sometimes I say that I, I was an early version of CoffeeZilla, like an alpha pre-released version where I took the more the more numbers driven approach. I had like detailed spreadsheets and very very complex <laughs> complex uh, formulas that would kind of show the nuance of financial things of interest when it comes to trying to assess these very suspicious and very outrageously promising things in cryptocurrency and and then people took advantage of that and tried to use my research to prove that people should invest in it. And it just, it took away from the intent and uh, it it was definitely something that I wasn't expecting that would happen. And yet it did. It's just an audience size problem. I think as some of my videos have like reached a more, like I have a core audience who I think gets most of this stuff and, and, they're, and they're nuanced and I think they're pretty thoughtful. But I think as it reaches like a popular audience, you just lose a lot of that nuance Yes, but for a different reason. For me, I don't have millions of views like Coffee does. I'm a far, far smaller creator. But in in my my sector, my industry, where I was, I was considered one of the, the bigger YouTubers of that of that sphere. And to me, it wasn't that I had so many more viewers where that started happening. It was that I started drawing attention from the people that mattered most in that sector which were the the investors the people 
who are coming in saying, should I invest my Bitcoin and Ethereum into this or should I not? And people were coming to me because they they felt that I was a, a I was fairly reporting on the the numbers behind is this true is it not true and and so i don't think it was because i grew in size although that that probably helped where i grew grew in size relative to all the other creators in that space at the time it was because of the audience the core audience that was drawn to me and and then people trying to take that and repurpose that toward their ends a little bit different um but problem where in the future am i supposed to leave nuanced points just completely out of my stories i don't want to do that i think actually that's worse i think some of sometimes the nuanced stories are the best ones and yet this is sort of the kinds of things that i'm kind of faced with as a creator having to make choices about i had to make choices about that all the time especially when i started discovering that my videos were being headlined but also when i discovered how they were being used by the very people that i was fact checking and a, a good Example of that was because I was one of the, the top creators in that sphere of like BitConnect, for instance, BitConnect held a conference in Thailand. They really wanted me to go because they said I won an award. And I thought that was kind of interesting because my videos weren't exactly peddling BitConnect stuff. I didn't do any of my referral links. I didn't, I didn't do any of that. And I stayed away from that stuff. Oh, what I did was I report on the numbers, like, and, and at the time, BitConnect was giving you back the the stuff that it had promised, mostly. And before it all came to a halt and the, the scam was revealed, it was it was doing much better uh, at at disguising what it was really up to up until the very very end, up until it got indicted, I think, by a court in Texas. Anyways, what I discovered was that. They were using it, BitConnect, to their advantage. And I was at a crossroads. I was reporting on the facts, and those facts were painting a very clear story that things don't look, things are not the way they appear. CoffeeZilla takes a more narrative approach where he would just say, like, this is a scam, this is that, and then that. When I was in 2016 doing this stuff, I didn't feel comfortable just calling stuff outright scams. I was a small time creator. I stuck to the facts and let the facts speak for themselves. They did, but also BitConnect at that Thailand conference decided to name me like top YouTuber of the year. And I did not go. So when, if you were watching it live, then they announced my name that Lanzer had won and nobody came up <laughs> and they just kept going. But, but they, I, I, that's what I'm talking about. Like they, they not only headlined, but they then repurposed my intent, which was fact-checking them and showing when things did not meet and where this was headed in the trends and then kind of absorbing it into there. So I was stuck at a crossroads of, do I, do I keep going? Do I, do I keep reporting on the facts even though it gets repurposed? The core of my audience still enjoyed what I was doing, which was factual, and it showed when things did not live up to their expectations. And I also did report you know, looked at the, the websites and would say, hey, that doesn't make sense. That doesn't make sense. All these things don't make sense. You need to be careful. And it was just kind of really interesting how that, how that worked out. Awareness ultimately does drive change, but it doesn't come in the form of like pitchforks, you know, going at them personally. Like that's not the way. I didn't really have this, this problem too much. No one really messaged me to say, hey, I'm going to go after this other person. Personally, although it did culminate in in um, a federal agency asking me some questions about what I knew to um, to help with some things uh, when it came to the numbers that I had been reporting, so they wanted to to get a little bit more fact checking done on their side before they they started indicting people. And I don't know to what extent that was helpful to them. I didn't ask. Um, but <laughs> I, I gave the, I, I gave them my videos. I showed them that this is what I was preparing. This is what the number said. And then they took it from there and some people got indicted and some people got sent to jail for it. So for their, for their role, I was interviewed and, and that, that was about it. And 
<laughs> Fascinating. It, it was a wild, wild ride. And I was trying to show people that you need to be super careful at all these red flags. They are pointing in a very obvious direction. And don't go down this route unless you are sure you know what to expect and to, to lose all your money if, if you do that. So, yeah, fascinating. Fascinating time. I've learned a lot since then, but I was a little bit more shy about what coffee does. Coffee just says, that's a scam. And I was a lot more shy uh, at that time in 2016. Like I said, alpha pre-release version. I will continue to try to report nuanced, complicated, and frankly, serious topics. And I hope as an audience, even as a broad audience, we can be mature about that and deal with it appropriately and realize that, um, yes, these topics are serious, but it doesn't give anyone an excuse to go crazy. So just wanted to very explicitly talk about that. Um, tell my audience how I feel and yeah, you get it. All right. Thanks for watching. I really, really like the way he did that. I don't agree with everything coffee does and the way he does it. Sometimes I think he's just really overbearing about some stuff. I do like what he's doing. Uh, he's, he's much more, much more pointed about things than I was when, when I was doing those videos in 2016, I took the more analytical data driven approach. So I'm interested to see what he means when he says he wants to be more, be more thorough and, and, and kind of get into the numbers a bit more. If he means what I did when I had spreadsheets and very complex formulas to try and to track and then draw out the narrative from the numbers, whereas he has a very narrative and he, he tells a great story, and then he does show facts. That's great. I, I like the fact that he that he shows those facts, especially the pictures with the wallets. Now they connect together. That's really cool. More advanced than what I did. I could only do what I could do as a as a small creator myself. So yeah, I am not as nearly as big. I am tiny, tiny compared to Voidzilla or Coffeezilla's size, but. Even as a small-time creator, I face the same things he does, and I'm sure other small-time creators face the same thing too. And, and yeah, do I keep going when it's being repurposed? Do I leave out this or that because I know it might be used to the wrong ends? Kind of the same thing where he his things are being used to, to people, kind of taking it to the extreme, but in a different way for, for me on my end. Anyways, I wanted to share that. I thought that was that was kind of important to to say that you don't have to have millions of followers to have those same problems. It's it's a thing. It's a thing when it comes down to how do you be a creator. But yeah, that's all I want to share. Thanks.